today we are going to talk about the three reasons why you should be making mead. We are going to be talking about why mead is, is such a great um, alcohol to make for both beginners and advanced brewers because uh, of its versatility and its ease in a lot of ways. So I have three main reasons I'm going to talk about today. Um, the first reason, just getting right into it, is it is a, an, a minimum um, ingredient alcohol. And what I mean by that is you only really need three things in order to make a mead. Now, we're talking about a traditional mead in this sense, but uh, it's, at its bare bones, it's three things. You need honey, water, and yeast. Of course, there are um, equipment things like that we have to buy, but I'm talking essentially about just buying your ingredients. Between those three, you can make yourself a traditional mead, and traditional meads are great in themselves. They are a challenge, um, but they are very, very good. Now, of course, you can jump into the next world and start putting in other ingredients, um, and just like everything in the world, you can go totally down the rabbit hole and, and put 40 different, 40 different ingredients into your mead. Um, however, um, at its bare bones, because it is a simple ingredient um, alcohol, you only need those three things. So that's no, reason number one. Um, it, it's a great thing for starting for people because it doesn't require a ton of stuff to buy. You can really just get away with um, starting at the easy part, which is those three things, plus maybe um, apples or whatever other thing you want to add. So um, I love that it is a simple ingredients, ingredient alcohol. Next, number two, it is a simple process alcohol as well to make because it really only requires you to take those three ingredients or whatever else you're doing and just kind of shake them up and put them together. So if you want to make a mead, all you have to do is get your container, get your honey, um, get your water, and get your yeast and shake it up. And uh, that doesn't even have to be, it doesn't really require any heating up of water or honey. Um, you could do it all room temp. And uh, because it's so easy to just shake up and do, really you can do it pretty quickly. Also, you can, you can take and um, just put your meat away when you shake it up. Let's say you spend five minutes putting your meat together. The next brewing uh, side of things, you could let it go and it will start to ferment and do its thing. Now again, you could go down the rabbit hole of needing to do a million other step processes in order to, um, to help the meat along. And I'm not saying anything against those things because I do think it's important that we add nutrients and we add our oxygen and we degas and we um, check our gravity and all of those things. But at, at its basis, that process is very, very simple. Whereas beers and, um, and wines, like those things can take a little more of a step-by-step -step process. Um, and that's, that's one thing I like about mead is that it just, it's very simple, very clear instructions. You have your stages of fermentation, your primary, your secondary, which is no different for any other alcohol. And as you make it more, you start to understand when to add things, when to, um, to do the next step. But I really like making mead and I was very, very enthused to make mead because of its um, process. And of course, as I've made more mead, I've expanded upon my process. However, um, I, I've also stuck to that basic thing too because you don't really have to do too much with it. So that's reason number two. Um, first one, of course, was simple ingredients. Second one is simple step-by-step uh, -step process. And the third one is it is probably the most versatile alcohol out there. What I mean by that and versatile is it breaks into the world. It's a, it's a good branch between uh, wine and then you, your ciders and then also your beers because you can go the beer route with your, um, uh, with your mead because we can make beer mead mixtures and those things break into the millions of different kinds of meads. So we have things, um, a, a regular mead is just a traditional mead. Then we have things like hydromels. Now, um, hydromel is like the ancient word for mead, so you might get that confused, but hydromels are light uh, meads, meaning they're like 7% or lower ABV. So there's your cider side of things. 
Um, and then we start to get into the different variations like acerglin, which is where you're putting, um, you're putting maple syrup into uh, your mead instead of honey. We have other things like mellow mels, where you're putting fruit into it. Um, and I could keep going down and down that list. However, I don't want to because we don't have a ton of time. And uh, because it is very versatile, it does branch between those things. The specific one that I want to highlight too is uh, beers and meads uh, mixed together are called a braggot. And uh, that's a very popular thing to do. Of course, with a braggot, you do have to make a beer. You do have to have your mead or you have your beer plus your honey, whatever process in that way but you are mixing the two. And that's why I think it's very versatile. You have a nice mixture between all of these different kinds of alcohols. And if you are looking at making an alcohol for the first time, um, you can go out and buy a brewing kit for a beer or a wine or something and follow the step-by-step -step instructions. It comes in a big sheet that um, tells you exactly what to do. They don't really have this for mead yet. That's the biggest problem. No one has made a mead making kit that you can buy at brew shops. Instead, we have to go online and find the information on how to make a mead. Let's say you're sold on making a mead at this point. Let me walk you through the easy steps that I was talking about. So your first thing is you gather your ingredients. You're gonna need, um, let's say for a gallon of mead, you're gonna need three pounds of honey, whatever uh, kind you want and then you're gonna need about a gallon of water and you're gonna need a yeast packet. And I um, will put down below the bunch of yeast packets I recommend. Um, there are varieties of yeast and they do different things. Um, so that, that can be a little bit daunting, but once you kind of step, put your foot in the water, you understand it pretty well. Let's say you need those three things. You're making a traditional mead or let's say for just fun, where you're making an apple mead you're gonna take all your stuff, all your ingredients, you're gonna mix your honey and your water, you're gonna shake it up a bunch and get uh, the honey and water mixed in, then you're gonna put your yeast in. You can sprinkle it on top and um, it will start to hydrate itself and start fermenting over the next couple hours to days. Once it's starting to ferment, um, you want to watch it and make sure that of course it's not fermenting so vigorous that it comes out the top, anything like that to be messy. Um, if you, it should take about a week to two weeks, depending on how vigorous the fermentation is for it to finish. Um, in that time, you can do things like just shake it up a little bit, stir it lightly, and that will degas it, meaning it gets rid of the CO2. Um, if it is struggling to get going and you notice that your airlock that you put on top uh, as part of your equipment list, which is down below, um, is not bubbling very quickly in the beginning, um, it might need some yeast nutrient, which uh, I will include down there, yeast nutrient is just a little simple thing to put in. You can put some of that in there. Um, and then once that's all done, you've finished your primary stage. Now this is where the apples come in. You'll move it into a new container. You'll take your apples, you'll put them on top of that. When you put them on top of that, it's the secondary fermentation. You might kick up the yeast again, they start up again. You're getting your apple flavor put into the mead. You let that set for two to three weeks. Then uh, you take and you put that into a new container and you let it set for a while. And what I mean by a while is you want to wait at least a month or so before you really do anything with it. The turnaround time for mead is about three months. Um, is As early as three months in my opinion. Some people will say you can turn it out in a, two months. I think it's three months. Um, then you can obviously go further, let it age longer and that helps bring out other things as well. But uh, once that's done, put it in bottles and put labels on it if you want, and you have yourself a product. You have yourself something that you've made in a pretty easy process. Comparatively, beers, you have to buy all the different ingredients. You have to boil the, the mash. You have to uh, boil the wort, excuse me, boil the wort and do all those things and, um, and buy the malt extracts. And that's fine, that's fun, but it is a little bit daunting. So this video is really meant for people who are starting to make an alcohol or want to make an alcohol. Uh, it is a very, very fun thing to do. It becomes a rabbit hole of, of making more and more, and I highly encourage making mead. Of course, I'm, I'm a little biased to mead because I run a channel called Man Made Mead. I am make, I've made a bunch already. I've made about 36 different meads at this point, and uh, I hope to continue to make more. You guys have given me lots of great ideas. I find ideas online, and so I'm in this eternal loop of just making more and more mead. But I hope I have convinced you to make mead.
your three reasons, simple ingredients, simple process. And then it is a versatile breaking into all styles of alcohol, um, kind of alcohol. So it, it kind of links them all together. It's also just very fun to introduce to your friends because um, lots of people haven't really tried mead. And so you can bring something new into their life. Now, uh, that means that you need to also try different kinds of meads. So what I am going to encourage you to do is to go out and buy a mead before you make one. Um, try to find one local to you or just find one anywhere in your brew shop. Uh, excuse me, in your, um, in your liquor store. So let me get you a good example of that. I have two examples here. This is one that I've made myself. Um, this is, I, I do my own labels because I think it is, um, it looks nicer to have a bottle with a label and I have had fortunately enough friends who can help me design things. So here's mine, one of mine. This says the OK Boche and it is um, a style of mead that is a Boche. Then here is from, this is the Artisan Meadery. And this is one of their bottles. Uh, this is a little bit bigger. It is a full wine bottle, but I bought this one in, um, I, you know, I purchased one, this one in a liquor store. So ultimately, I like having my own meads, but then breaking out and trying other ones. So uh, like I said, I hope I've convinced you. And ultimately, it is your choice to make whatever alcohol you want. But as somebody who has experience starting very, you know, new in the brewery, brewing scene, with uh, an alcohol, a long time ago, I, when I first started is what I mean, I didn't have a lot of experience. I'd done a beer before, but then mead was really interesting to me because of all the things I've said. So I um, hope you've enjoyed. Check out my links down below. There's a Facebook where you can follow us and, and follow this community called uh, Man Made Meadery on Facebook, check it out. Then there's a Patreon where you can help support me and uh, I have a whole slew of things about that and that will hopefully um, be another community to be a part of. And then I have Society6, t-shirts, and various other things. Um, and finally, a PO box. All of these things are down below. The steps are down below. The things you need to start mead making are down below. And uh, just check it out if you have any interest in making mead. But I appreciate you guys uh, clicking on this video. I hope that you um, have a great day and uh, definitely hit that subscribe button if you are if you're interested in having more mead related content in your life. So I'll see you guys next time. Cheers.